The Bible reading is Proverbs 5, and you can find it in the Church Bibles on page 638. Proverbs chapter 5. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight, that you may maintain discretion, and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honour to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life you will groan. When your flesh and body are spent, you will say, How I hated discipline! How my heart spurned correction! I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructions. And I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in the public squares? Let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? For your ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all your paths. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast. For lack of discipline they will die, led astray by their own great folly. Let's pray. Father, we know that all scripture is God-breathed, breathed out by you and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Use this word in our lives you know the different stages that we are at. May this word be used, maybe even tonight, to prevent folly and sin. May this word be used in our lives in the future. May this word do us all much good. Please train us through your word by your Holy Spirit to be effective disciples of Christ. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Well, if you are caught speeding these days and you fulfill certain criteria, you can be sent on a speed awareness course. Anyone been on one? You don't need to confess it. Yeah, yeah, some hands going up around the place. I haven't been on one myself, I hasten to add. But the aim of the course is to educate you into understanding the dangers of speeding. The dangers of speeding are well known, but seem to be get forgotten by drivers. Stopping distances increase massively with each five miles per hour. The rate of serious injury and death increases dramatic with each five to ten miles per hour. Speeding awareness helps you think about why you were speeding. 
It tries to help you with your inner reasoning. Why do you think you're king of the road? Why do you think you can handle it? Why are you always leaving late for things? It kind of lets, allows you to explore your motivations. Speeding awareness courses remind you of the law, of what is right and what is wrong. Speeding awareness courses are there to educate you so that, so that you do not endanger your life or the life of others. They are to stop you doing, bringing damage and to bringing disgrace on yourself. Ideally, of course, every person should be sent on a speeding awareness course before they ever sit behind the wheel of a car. Well, this evening, we are running a course. Not a speeding awareness course, but it is the first part of a sexual immorality awareness course. A sexual immorality awareness course. The instructor is the father and he is running the course for his son. Although we see with verse 7, it's my sons, we are all invited. And of course, men and women are to listen in. It's directed to the son with the dangers of the women, but it works equally well the other way. Justin will be your course organizer in a couple of weeks' time as he looks at part two of this course. You see, so far in Proverbs, the Father has given a lot of positive teaching. If you just look across to chapter 4, and maybe there at verses 5 and 10, uh, get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you and love her and she will watch over her, you. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, though it costs you all you have, get understanding. Go hard after wisdom, son, really hard after wisdom. Don't, whatever it costs, get it. But now, in chapters 5 to 7... Go hard after her, that is wisdom. Then in chapters 5 to 7, but you must avoid this. You must avoid folly. Go after wisdom and avoid folly. So are you ready? for the Sexual Immorality Awareness Course, part one. You see, verses one to two, pay attention, listen. Listen again, my son, says the father. Listen. That your lips may preserve knowledge. You may main discretion. Listen, because if you want to be a wise person, you need to listen again. So what does he have to say on this sexual immorality awareness course? Part one of the lesson is I think there in the first uh, well, verses three to six. And that is that sexual immorality will appear very tempting but in the end leads to death. It's attractive, but dangerous. And the scenario that is painted here is of a young man. It said to the son, it's on a son, I know that down the line you may well experience this sort of temptation. She will draw you to herself with her speech. 
The lips of this woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil. Her voice sounds and the promises are like honey. What she has to say sounds like it's just so lovely. It seems so sweet. I guess in Bible times there weren't a whole lot of sweetness around. I mean, honey is delicious today. It must have stood out then. Just so delicious. Her speech is smoother than oil. Oil that comforts. Oil speaks of pleasure. Oil speaks of smoothness. She's great to look at. Her voice is lovely. And she is available. She's happy to break her vows to be available for you. Again, you can flip that round, men to women. She's attractive. You've met her at school or you've met him at school. You know him at college or you know her at college. She's beautiful. What she offers is just fantastic and she's available. Maybe at work, maybe even at church. It's so attractive. Like speeding. But where does it lead? Well, with speeding, you can get away with it. You can drive at 100 miles an hour on the motorway and not be caught. You really can. With sexual immorality, it leads each time to a sort of death. It doesn't lead to the sweetness it promised. It leads to bitterness and it leads to a painful end we have a new knife all our knives are getting blunt I went out got the witch recommendation kitchen devil 11.99 put it into the drawer went and grabbed in there for something else ouch straight into it you know the way it is with knives this isn't just a jab from a kitchen knife. This is the double-edged sword destroying. And it's all heading down to the grave. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought for that. She doesn't know where it's going. But you're just going with her. You see, it gets right onto the table. It will be attractive and it leads to death. Got that on the course? Second part of the awareness courses are in 7 to 14. Stay away. Stay away to avoid the slow death. Verse 8. He can please, by the way, in verse 7, Now then, my sons, listen to me. Listen, listen. Don't listen to her. Listen to me, please. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house. I really enjoy mountain walking. We really enjoy walking on uh, cliffs as well. We'd be, Harriet and I have been doing the southwest coastal path, which takes you right round uh, the kind of southwest coastal path. Somerset, Devon, Cornwall, back to Devon, into Dorset. And quite often there are high cliffs. Well, very often there are some very, very high cliffs. I have no head for heights. And I'm... Um, what you normally have, and I'm really pleased about this, you have a path for the idiots, which is right by the cliff edge. There's a path for the half idiots, and there's my path right up against the wall or the fence. So even if half the cliff fell away, you're kind of safe. I like it on there. And that's just because I'm a coward. But actually, in this sort of area, in the area section, that's the right place. The path that is far away from the edge. 
is the path that is recommended. Stay away. And those words echo down through Scripture. Joseph, back in Genesis with Potiphar's wife, the young man, the classic young man, who has the wife, the potential adulteress, available. He says no, he says no, he says no. And then when she really pushes herself on him, he flees. Paul will write in 1 Corinthians 6, 18, flee from sexual immorality. Just get yourself out of there. You have to take evasive action. Don't go to that place. Why? Well, the slow death is spelt out in these verses. Look at what gets lost. Verse 9. Lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. It's your dignity, you can say, it's your years. You will lose dignity. You will lose your years. Your years will be taken up with this. You will lose what you had. Verse 10. There's a saying which I saw kind of repeated through the commentators. If you take what does not belong to you, you wind up losing what does. If you take what does not belong to you, you wind up losing what does. And you get to your end of your life, here in verse 11, 12, it's really excruciating, full of regrets. Life is filled with a groan. And you look back and you say, how I hated discipline, how stupid I was. Why didn't I listen. And you see, this is the sin of someone who was, in one sense, was an insider. Look at verse 14. For I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. In the end, it came out. And in that environment, there was disgrace. You see, it's laying it on, the Father is laying it upon the Son. Adultery brings personal shame. Adultery humiliates our loved ones. Adultery leads to loss of respect in the community. You can see what he's doing here. This is a sexual immorality awareness course. Part 3, verses 15 to 19 of the course is what we should do instead of sexual immorality. If this was the driving speeding course, this is the right way to drive. And the answer is to be intoxicated, verses 15 to 19, with your own spouse. Before we just have a little think about this, I just, it'd be just good to get the kind of law sorted out in our heads and what God teaches about sexual ethics. Um, Vaughan Roberts is the vicar of St. Ebbs in Oxford. He is a wonderful Bible teacher. And recently he spoke at a conference over in Korea on the whole issue of uh, sexual uh, ethics. I didn't hear the talk. But I did hear someone talking about the talk and he said, did you hear Vaughan's talk? This was a kind of podcast. I said, yeah, I did. He said, it was just brilliant with just four points. And the four points of the talk he just shared, and it, they're just great talk. They're just great points. Let me share them. I haven't even heard the talk. Here they are, okay? A little recap in sexual ethics. Number one, God is for sex. Number two, sex is for marriage. Number three, marriage is for life. Number four, life is for Christ. That does it, doesn't it? Number one, God is for sex. He is. He created it. He gave it. It's a good gift. Number two, sex is for marriage. That's where it belongs. One man, one woman in marriage. Number three, 
Marriage is for life. Yes, there was sometimes when it is legitimate to be divorced, but you, it, the intention of God's word is for life. And life in the end is not about marriage, it's about Christ. Sexual intimacy is for marriage and marriage alone. And so here the father reminds the son that he likens sexual intimacy to water. Don't share it out. It's a powerful and good thing in the right place. Keep it at home. Be intoxicated with your wife. That's the channel, the appropriate channel. Not boyfriend or girlfriend, wife or husband. There, of course, is parallel teaching in 1 Corinthians, and I'm just going to turn uh, to that, um, where we see Paul picking up these ideas um, in 1 Corinthians 7. Let me just turn to the, there and read it to you. He's writing to Corinth, which was full of sexual immorality. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have a sexual relation with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. And so it goes on. Within the marriage relationship is the right expression, is the right place for sexual intimacy. And as the writer to Proverbs encourages it, so does the Apostle Paul. That doesn't mean, of course, that every Christian marriage or every marriage is a happy marriage. But that's the direction of travel. That's where it is to be expressed. Now, of course, we've, all, because we've also got to think about those who are single, either through being divorced, being widowed, or never married. That is where God has placed you. I think when Paul uses the word gift in 1 Corinthians 7, that is some gift, that's where he's placed some of us in marriage, he's placed some of us at single at this point. By the way, everyone who's married was once single, and one day, may, well, half of us at least will one day again be single. And there we need to pray for grace. God has placed us in these situations for our good. Grace in the battle, grace to be godly at this stage of your life. So in the sexual immorality course, awareness course, we've seen that sexual immorality is dangerous, it leads to death. We've seen that we are to keep far from it, mindful how damaging it is. Thirdly, we've seen that we are to be taken up with our spouse, not with another. And he rounds off this session of the course with a question, a question that he wants to leave with us. Verse 20, why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why be intoxicated? Think about it. And then we get some truths about God. Remember that all your ways are in full view of the Lord and he examines all your paths. Do not think he does not see. Speed cameras are not yet everywhere. I am expect the day is coming when they will put them into our cars and they will know exactly what speed we are doing at all times, but not yet. But the Lord sees perfectly what we do and what we think. And I think that verse also speaks of his judgments. The evil deeds of the wicked did snare them and the cords of the sin hold them fast. You see, part of God's judgment is if we dabble with sexual sin, as with all sin, it ensnares and it blinds so that people can't often break free from it. Nor do they want to break free after a while. What is this chapter teaching us? Well, it's teaching us, isn't it, the danger of sexual immorality in particular, but also the danger of folly in general. Back in chapter four, it was the pursuit, pursue wisdom, 
pursue wisdom hard and she is personified as, as, as a woman pursue, and here it is the woman folly and particular here sexual immorality what do you want to take from this what should we take from this maybe tonight you need to look to the future and you need to be praying thank you for reminding me of the dangers of sexual immorality please help me again to see the dangers Paul writes to the Thessalonians, the Lord will punish those who commit such sins. And he gives that as a warning to believers. Maybe what you need to do tonight is just to pray that you would keep those dangers before you and pray that God would help you to guard your heart. Pray particularly for the younger folk that they would be able to guard their hearts and lives and hands. Pray that we would learn, would live well for Jesus and would this word be used to bring us up sharp and to keep us from those dangers. It may be actually be a word for you tonight that you need to hear that word flee. Maybe you are stumbling in or towards something from which you need to flee. Flee. I think we may need to mention, of course, the issue, whole issue of pornography, which, of course, is a kind of form of sexual immorality, which is particularly, I think, ensnaring, really ensnaring. We want to try and protect our kids from that. And if you have been sucked into it, please seek help if you haven't been able to pull yourself out of it with God's help. Get help. And time and time again now, I speak to people who come after kind of two or three or four years of addiction to it, and you say, well, you should have come earlier. No one's going to shout at you. We want to help you out of that addiction. And we need, of course, to speak to us where we have failed in this area, where we have failed where there has been sexual sin in the recent past or maybe in the deep past. There really is forgiveness. It might be that we carry some of the wounds of that sin, but that does not mean that we are not forgiven completely and utterly Paul will write a warning to the Corinthians that if you go on persisting in sexual immorality or idolatry or homosexual sex or if you continue as a thief or you continue as a drunkard that you cannot inherit the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 6. And he turns to the Corinthians congregation and says, and that is what some of you were. That's what some of you were. Not all of you, but some of you really were. But what? But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God. Tonight, know for sure that you've been forgiven if you've turned from yourself. Really, really forgiven and accepted by God. And if you come tonight as someone who's not yet a believer, and this is just a kind of, so much about your life, well, know that you too can be forgiven, washed, cleansed, and completely accepted by God, and of course, by each other. Why can we be accepted and forgiven? Because in the end, 
there was only one perfect wise son. There was only ever one son who listened perfectly to his father. There was only ever one son who heard all the commands and obeyed them perfectly. And that wasn't you and that wasn't me. That perfect son was the Lord Jesus Christ who obeyed this perfectly, was educated and listened and walked perfectly. He is the only wise son. He is the God-man and he came into this world to die because we were imperfect sons who had not been wise and had been sinful. And he came and in love for us gave himself on a cross so that what is his might become ours and what is ours might be taken by him. He takes our sin upon himself and bears the punishment so that we might be given his righteousness and be true sons and adopted. And not only that, he gives us the Holy Spirit so that we can live transformed lives and learn to break those old patterns and learn to live in new ways. Let's pray. Father, where our consciences have been unsettled and for whom this has been a painful evening, may you grant a sense of forgiveness and hope and mercy. We thank you for the cleansing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where these words have been listened to with hardness of heart and indifference, would you please grant repentance? And Lord, these words are given to us so that we may live wisely. We know that temptation and sexual temptation can come at any stage of our lives. We pray that this word will be used, that we'll be able to say no, to flee, and to live rightly. Use this word in our lives and in our hearts for our good and for your glory. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we're going to finish by singing a prayer that the mind of Christ would dwell in us, that as we go into this week rejoicing in our forgiveness, we would go with the mind of Christ to serve him. Let's stand and sing.
Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.